Between 5 o'clock in the evening of September 7th and 3 o'clock the following morning, German bombs killed 1,000 Londoners. Hermann Göring announces proudly on German radio that the Germans have reached an historic hour. The Luftwaffe has delivered its thrust right into the enemy's heart. The next day brings extreme tension and many rumors to London. Some believe that the firestorm is just a prelude to a German invasion. However, the first requirement for a successful invasion has not yet been met. The English Fighter Command is still operating. Hitler decides to await the outcome of the next few days. The British Air Force meets the enemy head-on. The result, fewer than half the German planes succeed in dropping their bombs. Hitler is still hoping that the British will crumble under the repeated attacks on their capital, again postpones his decision to invade. He has been assured that air supremacy is almost within his grasp. The Luftwaffe is now facing a crisis. They must claim victory without any more delay. Goring picks Sunday, September 15th, as the day of reckoning. The morning of September 15th turns out to be ideal flying weather, cloudless and with fine visibility. At about 10.30 a.m., the radar warning system picks up enemy planes gathering over the French coast. I knew there were a hell of a lot of raids coming in. So I'm at 25,000 feet, so I, I started looking for some trade, as we used to call it. And I, I saw this huge armada of bombers coming in, forgetting all about their escort fighters. And I flew straight into the middle of the escort fighters on my own. And I'm surrounded with it, whizzing all over the place. So I, I just simply put the Spitfire into a, a, a really tight turn. And every time one of these flushed past me, I pressed the button. But I got away with it and actually shot one down, I think. Its psychological effect upon the German fighters and bombers was incredible. Their morale was down to start with because they were losing every fight they got into. And they were being told that one more big push and it's all over. And they believe this and they come over and they suddenly see 60 fighters, not, not just a squad. And they've been told we've got none left at all. So the effect on their morale must have been enormous. And uh, the younger pilots who were, we, we found out were far, far inferior to the ones we've been up against, say, at Dunkirk. They were no match for us at all. The great battle, which rages all day, was to have crushed fighter command. It is instead a shattering blow to the German airmen. The Luftwaffe has been routed. Again, Hitler's gamble has lost. Goering still insists that four or five more days of heavy fighting will swing the balance. But as far as the invasion is concerned, time has run out. The tactical result of the German defeat in the Battle of Britain was that Hitler had to give up on the idea of invading England because he could not get air superiority over the channel. But Hitler has decided on a new phase of the battle. The German Luftwaffe now sets out with vengeance to destroy London. Night after night, until well into November, London is bombed unmercifully. If the Germans have failed in their destruction of British air power, they intend to succeed in their efforts to break the spirit of Londoners. After 57 days of consecutive bombardment, Londoners prove that they can take it. It is a time when the British, and particularly Londoners, are seen at their best. By November, the night raids are expanded to include the industrial cities of Britain. Coventry is viciously attacked on November 14th, as are Bristol, Southampton, and Liverpool. Plymouth, Sheffield, Manchester, Leeds, and Glasgow also become targets for the bombers.
bombing of England would continue through November of 1941, and 25,000 civilian lives would be lost, but it would not break the English spirit. Some German pilots shot down in the air battles make it back to France and then see their homeland from the inside of a hospital. Those who recover are sent back into service. George Unwin would continue to fly with the RAF and be credited with shooting down 14 enemy planes. He would always be grateful for his aircraft. If we hadn't had the Spitfire during 1940, uh, then I think it would have been very, very bad. We would have lost the air battle and we would have lost the war. During the Battle of Britain, the Luftwaffe lose over 2,300 aircraft. The British lose 600 fighters. But if there's any single decisive day in the Battle of Britain, it's September 15th, when the RAF bravely faces a very formidable enemy and wins.